So postural instability is one of the four core motor symptoms of Parkinson's, and it's a pretty broad term. So can you give us, uh, let us know what it is, how doctors look for it and diagnose it, and then physiologically what's happening in somebody's body with Parkinson's that is, is causing that to happen? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So, you know, path, postural instability and gait dysfunction is considered one of the four cardinal symptoms of Parkinson's. So how do we get to that or how do we see it? Well, if you look at pictures or images, right, that's the classic uh, line drawn, uh, line drawing of an image or of an individual with Parkinson's sort of with the stooped posture, right? And I think that's probably where most of it comes from. But, but it's really much more, more than just having a stooped posture. There is certainly periphery, right? Changes in muscle mass that are associated with sarcopenia, associated with aging. Um, and as I'm hitting that age 55 and older mark, we all experience that. So there's some of that. And then there's also um, some of it's related to um, physiolo- or, uh, pathophysiology, right? So much of this instability comes when individuals are dual tasking. Right. And we think of, you know, what's dual tasking? Um, That's really processing cognitive information and monitoring motor function simultaneously. Right. So you think about you're you're in a grocery store. That's a classic dual task. You're walking through the grocery store. You have to be checking your item, your list. You know, do I have this bread? Do I have that? Whatever. You also have to be aware that someone else is coming down. the aisle or that there is, you know, uh, obstacles and things like that. So you're processing information. And the there are a number of different hypotheses associated with, you know, why individuals then have either freezing of the or postural instability under these conditions. And there's, there's four sort of predominant uh, um, hypotheses. I won't go into each of them, but fundamentally, uh, it, it we think that there's probably a level of attentional resources that are being disrupted by Parkinson's. And because you have diminished attentional resources, you either have to attend more to your your motor component, the gait, let's say, or the cognitive component. And that potentially causes problems in terms of doing these two things at the same time.